everybody, welcome to To The Table, and today we're going to be doing a couple's play. It's going to be myself versus my wife, Christine, and we're going to be playing Holmes, Sherlock and Mycroft. This is a set collection game for two players in which we are going to be taking on the roles of the Holmes brothers. Christine will be Sherlock and I will be Mycroft Holmes. And uh, the whole basis of this game is we are going to be competing to have the majority of different clues, as you can see here, to decide the fate of a... Got a young man named Michael Chapman because uh, back a long time ago in the late 1800s there was a an explosion in Parliament. To be exact, it was February 24th, 1895, and uh, so the uh, Parliament is charging Michael Chapman with uh, blowing up this bomb, and they have hired me, Mycroft Holmes, as the investigator for the Crown, trying to gather up enough evidence to convict him. Unbeknownst to me, the family uh, has hired my brother, Sherlock, uh, to investigate and gather up clues to um, get uh, to proclaim his innocence. And so uh, this is what we're going to be doing over the course of the game. And so as we play the game, the investigation is going to last a total of seven days or seven rounds. And you can see uh, on the, the game board that there are the different day spaces. And what we're going to be doing is uh, using our action markers in a, in a worker placement faction to uh, visit these different characters on the board and activating their abilities and um, trying to gather up resources, which are called investigation tokens, or uh, and, uh, using them as well as player abilities to gather cards and put them into a tableau in front of us and we will score points at the end. So quickly let me talk about the cards um, as we have some out here. Uh, this is a footprint. As you see there is a number eight on there. That means that there are eight of these clues in the deck and whoever has the majority of these cards is going to score eight points. Now if a player happens to have all eight of these cards uh, they will score a three-point bonus for having a total majority. Now, uh, let's say that I collected six of these and Christine had two of them. I have the majority, I'm gonna score eight points. However, I'm going to lose one point for each card that my opponent has, so I would only score six points. And so uh, that's going to be um, how the scoring is gonna go. And there are at least, let's see, there's two, four, six, there's eight different types of clues in the game. There are also some map fragments, and there are cards that are wild cards. We'll talk about them as we come up. So there's some interesting things as we're playing the game. I'll explain the rules as you see them, and it becomes important. But uh, let's first talk about our starting characters. So there's always going to be three of them that are always in the game. So we're going to have Dr. Watson. And if we visit Dr. Watson, we pay one investigation marker, and we take one clue from the tableau, and we put it in front of us. We have Mrs. Hudson. If we go and visit Mrs. Hudson, we are going to get three investigation markers put in front of us. There is no limit to the number of investigation markers. If they're all out though, uh, this is all we have, so we wouldn't be able to take any more. And then we have Inspector Lestrade. And with him, you pay three investigation markers and you take two visible cards from the lineup here. Now, we have uh, some characters that will uh, vary from game to game, at least in the order of their appearance, and there's going to be one character who will not be used during the game. But uh, let's talk about uh, this guy here. We have Shinwell Porky Johnson, and if we go and uh, visit him and activate his ability, this will allow us to uh, remove one to three cards from this lineup and put them out of play. And then also we have uh, Violet Hunter, and if we visit her, what it will do is allow us to exchange a card from our visible uh, tableau in front of us with one of the cards that's in the lineup. So, anyways, uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the game. Christine is going to be going first. And so we are going to be taking turns alternating placing our workers here. We'll lay them down flat. And you'll see uh, why we lay them down flat. Now, one thing uh, with the worker placement is that both of us can uh, go and visit the same uh, the same uh, character. However, certain ones uh, they they will become exhausted if we both go there, and it's going to be anybody but these three. So, uh, go ahead, Christine, for you. 
Well, let's start here and pay three tokens and take two cards. Okay, so you're jumping right in with the footprints. Okay. Um, let's see, you know, it's a pretty good idea too, but I'm going to go over here first and get three more investigation tokens. One, two, three. Okay, and I come over here, pay one token, grab one more card. So I see that she's going after footprints and I'm going to have to be aware of that to try and stop her. Now as you can see there's a couple of cards here that these are uh, wild cards. And the way the wild cards work is that um, we can take it and immediately add it to one of our stacks of cards that we have uh, in front of us to add to it. Or we could place it and set it off to the side and start another stack. So for example, I don't have anything. If I have one right now on my next turn, let's say I grab the button, now I would have two buttons. So the way that that's going to work. If I just never add anything to it, it's just sitting here, at the end of the game I'm going to be penalized for it. And uh, there is going to be uh, something where some of the clues can be taken, they'll be remain hidden, where they'll be face down with this marker on here. Wild cards can never be hidden. So uh, you'll see that when we get to the if it comes up during the game. Uh, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get rid of at least this one and remove it face down. Let's see if we can get some different cards up here. And uh, if they excuse the noise in the background, we have uh, a dog who likes to bark. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get three tokens back. Okay. And I'm going to go over here and uh, jump in and pay three to get two cards. So I think I'm going to take this button. I'll place that there. And I think I'm going to grab this footprint here and put this in front of me as well. So I've got a seven value card and an eight value card. Okay. And we'll refill this in. So now at the end of this round, uh, what we're going to do then is stand up each of our characters so we know that they are now ready to be used. If they are exhausted, uh, if we lay them flat down, that means that, that we are using them. So in the first round, we place them from in front of us. Now what's going to happen is we have to move them to another spot. And we can never have two of our same color uh, on the same character. So for example, I can't go and have two of them on Mrs. Hudson and so, um, so on and so forth. So the next thing that we're going to do is reveal our next character that comes out. And we have uh, James Moriarty. He's one of the optional villains. This guy is really, really nasty. And so what's going to happen is starting uh, with Christine, who would be the uh, first player, she's either going to have to give up one of her visible clue cards or two investigation markers. And then I'll have to do it, then she'll have to do it again, and then me. So it's, this is a pretty, he's pretty nasty. So let's, let's deal with, with him. Okay, so we have to deal with uh, James Moriarty, so what are you going to do? I guess I'm going to pay two tokens to start with. Um, I'm going to discard this one, this clue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also. Okay, those clues have been done. And then after we see two. our villain, we have to do seven. Two. I'm gonna get rid of those two. Okay. He's gonna disappear, so he's out of the game now, and so we're gonna have to reveal another guy here. So we have Billy, and the way that Billy works is that we can um, discard one of our visible clue cards, and we can take a number of investigation tokens minus the day that we're on. So for example, if I were to discard this one here, he would, I would get eight minus the day that we're on. Well, right now we're on day number two, so I would actually get six, um, six investigation markers. So it's a pretty good thing to do, but I am giving up a clue. So anyways, your turn. So now we have to worry about recovering from our villain, our nemesis, James Moriarty striking us. What this guy does. Which one? 
this one here? Oh, if you go to him, you uh, he will discard one to three cards from the row. From there? Yes. Okay. I guess I will do that. Make sure you lay him down flat. Oh. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Just the one? Okay. All right. Let's see. What am I going to do? Well... one and I think I'm gonna take this cigarette here Exchange this five with this nine right here. Okay, so we have uh, completed our next round. So everybody's going to stand up. None of our other characters are exhausted, so we'll flip up the next one. Ah, we have our second villain now, <laughs> uh, Sebastian Moran. Luckily, there's only two villains in here, and so what's going to happen is starting with Christine and myself, we each have to lay down one of our active markers this turn, and so uh, we will only be able to take two actions this turn, so go ahead and lay one down. Where is that? Like this? Yes, okay. and I'm just going to go ahead and lay this one down right here. Mm -hmm. And so day three, we have Toby. And if you go and investigate Toby, uh, what's going to happen is he's going to give you a number of investigation markers. Uh, depending upon the number of different types of clues that you have at that given moment. So if you have a lot of them, a lot of different ones, he's going to give you a lot of markers. So like right now I only have two different types. Same thing with Christine. If we were to go there, we would get two markers. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Grab two markers. Okay. I'm going to come over here and pay three. And I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to take this one here. Come over here and pay three. This one. A token and a bullet. Um, I'm just going to come over here and get three. One, two, three. Don't necessarily know if I want to exhaust Toby or not. So, stand these all back up. So now we shouldn't have any more villains to encounter during the game. So the next one we have is Von Kram. And if we go to Von Kram, the active player who goes there will be able to take one of the visible cards from the lineup. And then the opposite opponent can pay one investigation marker to take uh, one of these clues right off the top, and it will remain. They'll look at it, and then it will remain hidden until the end of the game, and then it will be assigned to their proper uh, stack at the end of the game. So, to you. Here, get three. Uh, let's see. I am. I'm going to go over here, pay one, and take this bullet.
Let's see. It's, I'm debating if it's worth going to Billy or not. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go over here to Toby, and I'm going to grab four as well. And just so, uh, one of the things too is, um, is she, as Christine visited Toby, that the uh, map fragments do count as a type of um, clue marker. So that's okay. always a beneficial thing. I'm going to go over here, pay three, and grab this guy. Okay, let's see, what am I going to do? I have one more turn, and I need to get some cards. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to spend three. One, one, two, three. I think that I want to get this false pass. And I will take a button. And so we will stand up everybody. Uh, Toby will be exhausted this particular round because we both went to visit him. So day number five we have Irene Adler and what we will do is for um, this one she will allow us to steal cards from our opponent. What we have to do is pay a number of investigation markers equal to the day that we're on and you can steal one of the visible cards. So right now, we're on day five. It would cost us five investigation markers to steal a card from our opponent. I will first go over here. And let's see, what am I going to do? Well, I am going to go over here to Violet and I will exchange this with this bullet there like that. Over here. So, I think I want this cigarette butt. And I'll go ahead and take this bullet. All right, so stand everybody back up. Turn Toby back over. Yep. Reveal our next one. We have Inspector Gregson. Inspector Gregson, we can go to visit him and we can pay two markers to take one card. We can pay four markers to take two, or we can pay six to take three. Since we are on day six now, Irene Adler is going to cost six to be able to steal. And if we go and we visit Billy, if we discard one of these, we're going to subtract six from it. So right now, um, anything lower than a six, it's you can't not even going to be doing that. So, all right, it's up to you. Two, three, four, five. So I get five markers. And one more. There's five. Okay. And 
next move is going to be to take this one over here. Okay, three. So there's like a lot of it, like shifting to get stuff and acquiring cards. Okay, um, two, four, six, you know what? I'll do it. I'm gonna go over here to Inspector Gregson, and I'm gonna spend six markers to be able to take three cards. So, I'm gonna take this one. Take this one. And I'll take a bullet. And that was probably not a smart thing to do because Toby is going to be exhausted next turn, so mm -hmm. I won't be able to get a lot of markers. discard a few cards. I'm going to discard three. One, two, three cards from the lineup. Can't let you get all those nines and I can't let you get the map fragments. So, all right. So we'll stand everybody back up. Toby is exhausted this round. So there went my way of getting a lot of investigation markers. So last round, we have Langdale Pike. And so the way that Langdale Pike works is you can pay uh, one marker, or you can take, um, each time you play a clue token, so one, two, or three investigation tokens, you can take one, two, or three cards off the top of here. And what you do is uh, you choose to keep one of them and discard the other two. So it's kind of a way to help um, go through and, and uh, try and hopefully get something that you're looking for. I gotta see what I've got to get going on here to score some points. Come over here. This guy here. So take one. Unfortunately, I can't take anything because I have no investigation markers. I'm going to go over here and get three. I'm going to come here, pay three, and I will grab one, two, seven and Okay. 
do if there's a tie. Let me go to score and determine the points. Is there a tie for majorities? Let's see. Um, <laughs> doesn't look like anybody's going to get any points. I mean, no points so, my question is what do I want to do here? Because. It's your last move. I know. If I take it, then nobody's going to get that. Okay. I'm going to go over here and exchange. And I'm going to get rid of one of these because you don't have it. Any of those. I'm going to take this eight. Put this in front of me. That's going to be the end of the game. So what we're going to do um, is let me look if there's a tie. We don't have any hidden cards this no, time, too. No we don't have cards. any hidden cards, so we would do that. Um, and then we're going to do a comparison and see who has the majority. And so let's, let's take a look. We'll start from the lowest clues. We'll have a three. So I have a majority of this. I'm going to score three points. So I have three points. You have nothing. Mm -hmm. Four. I have one. Uh, it's a draw, so that neither one of us get that. Um, five. I have a draw. Two fives. I have yeah. two fives as well, so that's a draw. Six. I have four of them. Two. So I'm going to get six minus two is four. So that puts me at seven points. The sevens. I have two. I have three. So I'm going to get seven minus two is five. Mm -hmm. So I have five and four is nine plus three is twelve. Twelve points. The um, eights are a wash. Mm -hmm. Nines. I have a nines. Minus one is so you have eight. Mm -hmm. Plus, you have three of those tokens. You have three. So it's three more points. So eight and three is 11. So... You won with 12. 12 to 11. So anyways, that's, uh, that's uh, Holmes, Sherlock, and Mycroft. Um, I just find this to be a really enjoyable uh, two-player game, uh, trying to collect sets and, uh, and uh, majorities. And so uh, what do you think? It's pretty fun. Uh, my wife is not a, not really like a gamer, so it's nice that this is a nice casual game that we can enjoy. But there are some really cool elements that come into play in this game, and it has a lot to do with the timing of when these guys come out. Uh, some of them are, are uh, more valuable early on. Like if Billy comes out in the first round, and you could take one of these and discard it, and you're going to get like eight investigation markers. I mean, you're giving up a clue, but that's also going to give you a lot of these to work with later on. And uh, the other things too with being able to steal, Irene Adler, she's really good early on because you can steal cards for cheap, but as the game goes on, she's not as useful to use. Um, different ones like Toby, for example. Toby's really good if you have a strategy of going with a lot of different cards, you can get a lot of resources. But he's one that tends to get visited quite a bit early, so he gets exhausted. So there's some interesting gameplay in here. I find it to be a nice light game that's enjoyable. Couples can play, and so hopefully uh, this little playthrough, you can get an idea of this is something that uh, you would be interested in checking out. So again, this is Holmes, Sherlock, and Mycroft from uh, Devere, America. And uh, we'll catch you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.